In this video, we're gonna talk about the 10 best condo buildings in downtown Toronto. Last week, I released a video called the top three worst buildings in downtown Toronto. And that was actually a pretty easy video to put together because the general consensus was on these three buildings, basically across the real estate industry. I wanted to do a video just talking about my top three best condos in downtown Toronto. But as I started putting that list together, I was like, honestly, this is impossible. I have to do a top 10. And something to keep in mind is there is 2,700 condos registered in the greater Toronto area. So to pick three of them would just basically be impossible. And I've got a quick favor to ask you before I go any further. If you like this type of real estate content, if you could subscribe to this video and like it, it really helps a lot. And if you want to talk to me in depth, go to the link in my description. You can book a buyer consultation, a seller consultation, or just a call to chat about real estate. Okay, now let's get to the list. But before we get to the list, I want to give you my criteria. Number one, we are only doing downtown Toronto, okay? Only downtown Toronto. When I say downtown Toronto, I mean south of Bloor. Number two, these buildings have to be a minimum of five years old. Now, why would that matter? Because most buildings have all their issues in the first three to five years, and then they figure them out after the fact. So if your building that you live in right now is under five years old, it is not eligible to be on this list. I also tried to pinpoint buildings that I think no matter how the market is doing, these are buildings that will always hold their demand. And to finish it off, we look at the builder, the overall quality of life living in that building, the management company, and the condo fees. This list is in no particular order and is 100% my bias. These are the buildings that I personally think if I had to choose the 10 best right now, these would be the ones on my list. The first building is 2214 Street West, also known as Theater Park. Now, Theater Park was built by Brad Lamb Developments about six years ago. And you can have your opinions on Brad Lamb. I totally understand that. But the reality is he does build some pretty great quality buildings. Now, this building is selling at about $1,300 a square foot. It is certainly not cheap, but I think for that specific area where it's located, it's one of the best options in the city. The next building on the list is 55 Front Street East, also known as the Birdsey. It's an eight-year-old building. Its average sale price is just over about $1,200 per square foot. It's a very in-demand building. You don't see a lot of turnover because people end up living there a long time because it's such a great building. Also compared to the area, it has low maintenance fees. 55 Front Street East is one of my top 10. Next up is Candy Factory Lofts. Candy Factory Lofts is located at 993 Queen Street West. It's basically across the street from Trinity Bellwoods Park. It's in real Queen West. It's an awesome building. It was actually originally converted about 21 years ago. There's like 120 units in the entire building. The maintenance fees are super reasonable based on being a conversion and being a true hard loft building. It's just one of the best lofts in the entire city. But that does come with a price. The Candy Factory Loft sells at over $1,200 per square foot. Staying on the trend with buildings with the name Factory in them, the Toy Factory Lofts is next on the list. It's located at 43 Hannah in Liberty Village. Now, Liberty Village is surrounded by all these brand new or within the last 10 year condos. And then you've got this awesome conversion loft at Toy Factory. The Toy Factory Lofts was originally converted about 12 years ago. There is just over 200 units. And compared to the area, the maintenance fees are actually extremely low. It's one of the only buildings I've actually ever heard of. A few years ago, the maintenance fees actually went down. It's a well-managed building and you've got some good quality size units. You got one bedrooms, 850 square feet. You're just not gonna find that in newer buildings. Next up is London on the Esplanade. This is one Scott Street and 38 the Esplanade. It's about $1,100 per square foot. It was built 11 years ago. It's one of the best managed buildings I've seen in the area. We have a lot of clients that have lived there over the years and have nothing but good things to say. Now we're moving back to King Street West and the building that has made the list is 8 Charlotte Street, also known as the Charlie condos. The Charlie condos, in my estimation, are one of the best buildings specifically in that pocket where it's located. Now you are going to pay a premium. The building's selling at over about $1,100 to $1,200 a square foot based on the square footage of the unit that you are looking for. They also do allow Airbnb, which could put some people off, but this building originally built by Great Golf about eight years ago remains one of the best in King West. Keeping on the King West train, next up is 75 Portland. This is true King West. You got Ruby Soho across the street, which used to be Portland Variety. You got Lee Lounge, you got Worst, you got all the restaurants in this area. 75 Portland was built by Free Developments about 11 years ago. It has just over 200 units and is selling at almost $1,150 per square foot. Now we're staying on King Street for the next one, but we are going east and it is 510 King Street East, also known as Corktown District Lofts, number two. Located on the corner of King and Sumac, built nine years ago by Streetcar Developments, you have just under 200 units available in the building. We have several clients that actually currently live in this building and have lived in this building over the years since it has come to the market, and I've just heard nothing but good things about 510 King Street East. 
Next up, we go to Distillery District, and it's 33 Mill Street. 33 Mill Street has about 380 units available. It was built by Cityscape over 12 years ago. It's just one of the best buildings on the east side of the city before you hit the DVP, and the west views, looking back at the city and the downtown and at the water, are honestly some of the best views I think you can get in the entire city. And the last building on the list is 112 and 116 George Street, also known as the VU, the VU condos. Originally built by Aspen Ridge over 11 years ago, we've had a ton of clients that have bought and done very, very well owning in this building over the years. I personally think it's one of the best buildings on the east side. So there you go. There's my list of my top 10 buildings in downtown Toronto. Am I right? Am I wrong? Well, it's just my bias. But comment below on the buildings that you think I might have missed or buildings that could be contenders or potentially honorable mentions. Keep in mind, when I was putting this list together, what I was thinking about is buildings that no matter how the market is doing, whether it's amazing or really falling off, they're always gonna remain in demand, meaning that you're gonna see appreciation over the years and it's gonna be a good long-term investment. Thank you so much for watching this video. As always, if you have any questions at all, hit me up in the comments. I will hang out there. Have an amazing day. My name is Tom Story, and remember, home is where your story begins. Thank you.